Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Richard Moglin and welcome to another Python for Finance tutorial. Today, what I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do is create an automatic email alert system that'll basically send you emails that look just like this one whenever the SPY, the QQQ, Apple, or whatever stock you want crosses above a certain price. So this is definitely a very useful and powerful program and you can easily modify it to use moving averages or really whatever technical indicators you prefer. And before we get started with the coding, I do want to ask that you please leave a like down below on this video. I'd really appreciate it. And definitely does take quite a while to plan these out, code up the programs, and then finally make these videos for you guys. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please consider hitting that red subscribe button as well. And this way you won't miss any future videos just like this one. With that all said, let's go ahead and get started with the tutorial. So in order to make this happen, First, you're gonna need a Gmail account. And if for some reason you don't already have one, it's completely free, um, pause this video and then make one yourself. But once you already have one, go ahead and click this icon right here, click your account, and then you'll be navigated um, over to this page right here. And once you're here, go and click security and then scroll down to app passwords. Once you've clicked that, um, go ahead and generate a password that Python's gonna to use to interact with your Gmail account. So I've already created one that's labeled Python, uh, but basically this password can be used interchangeably with your normal password, and it's just convenient um, to use this for Python. Uh, so once you have that, you're ready to go, and you want to open up the kind of skeleton code that I have linked in the description. So I've already imported all the libraries that we're gonna need, and I've made two different variables. The first is email address and the second is email password. So here you're gonna use uh, your normal email address and password. I'm using environment variables just so you won't see my own information, but for you it'll be something like um, leave a like on this video at gmail.com. So once you've got that email and password in there, we can get started with the rest of the code. So first we're gonna need to create an email address object and we're gonna call this MSG and we're gonna set that equal to email message and then parentheses. And next we're gonna need to call our normal Yahoo Finance override to basically access the stock data. So it's gonna be yf.pdr underscore override and then we're gonna identify the start and end dates for the data that we wanna get. So dt.datetime, we're gonna say 2018 and December 1st. And then we also wanna end, and we're gonna say that is gonna be, uh, actually, we're gonna call that now, and we're gonna say that's dt.datetime, and we're gonna say dot now. And let's go ahead and make the stock that we're gonna use for this tutorial. We're gonna set that equal to the QQQ. And we're gonna want the alert to be notified um, when the target price is equal to 180. Um, so whatever stock you're gonna use, replace the QQQ with that ticker symbol. And then whatever alert price you want, to be, um, want it to be, put that in as well. And now we want to specify a few different things um, in this message object. So MSG subject, and we're gonna set that equal to alert on, and then we're gonna add the stock. So this is gonna be the subject line of our email. That should be good. Now also MSG and then from. And this is gonna be equal to that email address. And the to, to field is gonna be whatever email address you want to send the alert to. So this could be your own, or you have, if you have a group of buddies that you wanna send this alert to, uh, you can put in their email addresses. So I'm just gonna say rymoglin at turtmail.umd.edu. 
This is one of my other email addresses. And this has to be a string. So there you go. And we're also going to create right here um, <coughs> a Boolean that will basically check whether or not we've already sent out an alert on this stock. Because if we have already set out an alert, if the stock has crossed 180, we don't want it to send it again five minutes later. So we're going to initially send alerted and set that equal to false. Okay. So now we're going to go through uh, the meat of the program, which is basically uh, getting the stock market data, checking whether or not the condition has been met, and then if so, sending an email. Um, but if you think about it, we don't want this to be run only once. We want this to continually run until basically the user says they don't want the alert anymore. And there are two main ways to do this. And the way that I'm going to show you in this program um, initially is an infinite while loop. And this is just kind of the easiest way to show you guys quickly how this can be done. Um, and this will basically run continuously and keep checking that condition until we basically cancel the program. Uh, the other way, which I'm going to show you at the very end, is to use the Windows task scheduler to basically call the Python program um, every five minutes or so. And this can be good, but only if kind of you're, you don't care if you miss that first five minutes of the price movement. Um, so if you want to be alerted right when um, the price first crosses above that target price, this is the best way with the while loop. So we're going to say while one, and this basically is always true. And we're going to first say df equals pdr dot uh, get underscore data yahoo. And we're going to say stock, and we want the data from the start till now. And this should be an underscore as well. OK. And we're also going to want the current close or the current price of the stock. So current close equals DF adjusted close minus one. So if you've watched my previous videos of, um, <clears throat> excuse me, this playlist, uh, you know that this basically access, accesses the most recent close of the stock. Um, and if you haven't watched those previous videos, um, definitely after this one, go ahead and click the link in the description and watch those through because there's a lot of cool things that I show you guys how to do in those ones that you don't want to miss. Uh, but anyway, this basically gets the, um, the data that we want. And let's go ahead and run this and see if we've made any um, easy mistakes to fix. So um, if you are using Sublime and you want to basically run it right in Sublime, you can go to Tools, uh, Build With, um, or Build System, and then choose Python. And then you can basically just press Control-B, and it will run the program right down here. Um, and there you go. It's accessing the data just fine. So I'm going to press Control-C to cancel the program and everything's working just like we want. Um, so let's go ahead and quickly just print that current close. And let's run it one more time. So there you go, it's getting the current close. And right now we're after trading hours, so it's always gonna be the same. Obviously during the day, this would change um, as long as the stock's price changes. So let's cancel that again by Control C and keep on going. So we now have that current close value. Uh, we obviously want to compare it to the target price and see if it is currently above or below it. So we're going to make a Boolean variable called condition. And we're going to set that equal to current close is greater than target price. So this um, condition is going to be true when that current close is above that target price. And otherwise, it's going to be false. Um, and we can now use this in an if statement to basically um, either send an email or not, whether or not the alert should be sent. So we're going to say if condition, um, and we're going to say um, alerted equals true. Um, and we also have to add in here an and, and basically and alerted 
equals equals false. Um, so what this if statement is doing is it's checking this condition, whether that's true. And if that is true and alerted equals false, then it's gonna run whatever's in this if statement. Um, if we don't have this second part of the if statement, um, this will basically always send you an alert, um, even if you've already been sent an alert for that stock. And that could get really annoying. Um, so that is good. Um, and basically right here, this um, line right here is basically changing that alert to true so that you don't get set that alert over and over again. So now that we have that, we basically want to create a message that will be sent out via email um, when the alert is set. So basically let's make a variable called message and we're gonna set that equal to um, stock plus has activated the alert price of str target price and let's do a plus bar here let me let me be able to show you guys and we're going to plus and then backslash to basically move on to the next line of code and we're going to say parentheses backslash n and this in the quotes basically makes a um, an enter sign for Python and um, current price equals plus SDR current close. So I realize it might be a little confusing about what I'm doing with this backslash N and also this. Um, so let's go ahead and print out this message. So print message. So save that. Um, do control B. And now you can see that, um, let's control C and scroll back up. Um, initially, it sent out this message here. The QQQ has activated the alert price at 179. Then it did that backslash N to move down to the next line. And then it gives us that current price. So that is the message that we want to send in our email. So that's perfect. Um, and um, just to explain it one more time, this backslash N basically is an enter sign. And all this is doing right here, this backslash is moving um, this line down to the other one so you guys can see it more clearly. Uh, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and set that to the content of the MSG object. So let's say msg.set and um, underscore content and put in the message. So that is good. And now we're actually ready to send the email. So this is going to be a little bit of complicated syntax, so bear with me. So first you want to say with mst plib dot mstp underscore SSL and we're using Gmail so mstp dot gmail dot com um, comma and we're going to use 465 um, as as a mstp and down here we're going to do mstp dot login and we're going to give us give that email information that we set earlier so email address comma email password and then we're going to send that email so mstp dot send underscore message and give it that msg object um, and once we've done that we just want to confirm that so we're going to print um, just a little information for us completed uh, once that is done. So going to my email, you can see that the most recent one is an alert on the spy. So if this works correctly, we should see a new email from the QQQ. So let's um, go ahead and run this. So control B. You can see it completed. So it should have sent the email. Let's cancel that control C um, and go ahead to my email. Let's refresh. And there you go, you've got that alert on the QQQ. So everything's working exactly like we planned. If you click that, we get the nice message that we identified earlier. Um, so there's a few more things I wanna show you how to do um, and add to this program. So if this condition isn't true, um, I want to print out to the command window that there are no new alerts. So let's say else 
print no new alerts. Um, and then I don't want this to run over and over again uh, right away. Um, that, that could be what you want to do if you really focused on getting the best possible price. Um, but personally, I'm okay with running it every minute. So basically, we'll do time.sleep and we'll give it um, 60 for 60 seconds. So basically, this will pause the program um, and sleep it um, for 60 seconds after all of this is run through. Um, so now it will check, it will run infinitely, but pause every 60 seconds. So basically it runs every 60 seconds. Um, so that is everything I want to show you how to do with that. Um, and let's save that. Um, but you might want to send attachments along with that email. So I'm going to show you how to send an Excel document along with that alert email, just in case that's something you want to do. Uh, for instance, for me, I've created a program that basically at the end of the day automatically sends me every green line breakout um, in an Excel document. So it's very useful to use and it's something that just gives you um, more possibilities with using that email alert feature. Uh, so let's go ahead and add that possibility. So what you want to do is um, first write files equals R and then you're gonna identify the path of the Excel document that you wanna use. So I basically skipped ahead so you don't have to waste time watching me type all that in. Uh, but after you've got that right here, you're gonna to have to say for file in files um, with open parentheses file comma RB as F and we're gonna say file underscore data equals f dot read parentheses and file underscore name equal equals fundamental list. And then we're going to add that to the email. So basically msg dot um, add underscore attachment. We're going to say file underscore data and we're going to say main type equals application comma subtype equals ostet dash stream and finally file name equals file underscore name so that is pretty much everything we need to do before we run this. Um, however, we want to change this from fundamental list with spaces to fundamental list.xlsx. Um, this way, basically Gmail recognizes it as an Excel file. So save that and then let's run it and see if we get um, an email with um, the Excel document attached. And there we go, there's the completed and there is the email with the attached Excel document. Uh, so thanks so much for watching guys that's it for the video today please remember to leave a like down below if you haven't already and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one see you guys in future videos <laughs>